was no. It depends how the vote goes, and the applicant can appeal, and the, the appeal may go against us. And we only have to drive down Sorghum Massey Road to see what happens when the yeah. Labour Party yeah. says they will defend yeah. the Green Belt, and we only have to drive past it. You can't miss it. That's what yeah. defending the Green Belt looks like to the Labour Party when you yeah. drive down Sorghum Massey Road yeah. nowadays. Hey. <laughs> True to his word, since the day he was elected leader of this council, has tried to be open and transparent with all members of this council. But let's not pretend this, this myth that this is a new cabinet. It is not a new cabinet. 40% of Councillor Hackett's cabinet were in the cabinet of Councillor Davis. Yeah. It is not yeah. a new cabinet, Mr Mayor. And to talk about scarce resources, he will have had the briefing from Homes England that I had. Homes England are not scarce of resources. Homes England have billions of pounds to invest in housing schemes. The tragedy is that this council has never asked for any of that money. Yeah, yeah. And Mr Mayor, I have to say as a final point, if Councillor Hackett thinks that Red Road and Celtic Manor are the answers to the climate yeah. emergency, yeah. Yeah. Problem, yeah. he is sadly deluded. Yeah. 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 Sorry, 
look, I, I've said it a few times now. Members of the public in the gallery, do not shout down at councillors. Please do not do that. You listen to what has been said. Now, we might have to take action if people continue like that. Councillor Fouts. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'm just trying to, to, to talk open, honestly, transparently about the first time. That's the first time. Uh, apparently, if you say something you know, people don't like, you, you, you get shouted at, well, that is democracy, I'm afraid. I, I put, put the way to the SAIR project, it did, that didn't take place. In my view, it looked okay as a, as a development at most stages. What you have to do with the development, though, once you enter into a, an exclusivity agreement, as we did with Neptune in New Brighton, God knows how long it took us to develop that scheme through its life. There were many hurdles and many, many chances. You can't simply say, and neither does the notice of motion say, you can't simply say, we don't like it, go away. Because that's not the world we live in. The exclusivity agreement gives some rights to both sides. We can say it's corrupt it's the fat cat. When you enter into something, you, you see it through. My view is that the first hurdle that we had an opportunity the leader has taken on the board, on board what the scrutiny committee said, and I would remind this committee it was a Labour motion at the scrutiny committee, moved by Councillor Joe Baird, seconded by myself, and it was properly thought out in, in terms of the legalities of it, and it found unanimous favour at the scrutiny committee. So I don't think you should start hailing abuse around about people not doing what they should, they're, they're supposed to do. You do your job properly. Leave your room, look at the then you will reach the right end. That's all I'm trying to say. And to simply say, green belt, green belt, green belt, I, hand on heart, could not vote against a life saving fire station to help people. I'd stop digging the hole if I were here. In Eastern Ward. St. Anthony's Club. I will remind members of this and the public it was a balanced decision. 20 executive houses are being built on Greenbelt in the conservation area because the greater good, because the greater good of that community is being served by a new community sports centre and things happen. So every time we make a decision, every time we make a decision, we have to appear and we have to look at it and appear. Just in what we do Beyond and open the business. So no, I would remind the public no, that we are making progress on, on this development. It has brought the eyes of the world on us for right or wrong reasons. And I do hope there is some legacy of some kind from the Holy Lake Golf coming back. Oh, it right. seems to me yeah, yeah, if we can't sell the on the one of yeah. the greatest courses in the world in some way to benefit our public, then Liverpool can't sell the Beatles. You're still in favour of it. Thank you, Councillor. Right, I'm just going to take two more. Two more. Right. Okay. Chris, Chris, and Chris Groom, and then Councillor David. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, Chris. Do you know what? I've been sitting here listening to this this argument, this discussion, and it's gone through a real wide range of issues, hasn't it? I mean, Steve's been very eloquent saying what we need to do and all the rest of it, and I agree with part of it. The issue I have with this whole situation is that I remember a council meeting not long ago, well, a couple of years ago now, where I asked the then leader of the council why it is that most of us councillors don't get the information that the lady had to hear. And his answer to me was, it's not up to me to tell you the information, it's up to you to find out. <laughs> so you shouldn't be made behind I think this is what the argument is here. That you look in the press, and you look in the Globe and the Echo, and all these statements that come out from Will Council saying, Will councillors have decided to do this, and Will councillors have decided to do that. In fact, in reality, 10 councillors have decided, and basically the cabinet have decided, because the rest of us don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And in the, so just to bring it straight back to this, this issue of the Celtic Manor, I really am aware from conversations about leaders' meetings and stuff, how, how Detrimental it's going to be to mention certain things, so we're staying away from all that. The issue I have with it is, is that councillors around here, on all sides, and I'm including some of the Labour people, really don't know what's going on. Yeah, you it's don't against know the, what's the past. And that's illegal.
So, yeah. so my concern is, and, and I will congratulate the new leader, Pat, because he has been open and transparent and he starts up on the right foot. And I'm really hoping that that continues because we are in a position that I don't believe we can get out of. And that is not through the fault of the other 56 councillors in this chamber. That is literally down to the last administration that was sitting for this. Probably. It should be brought to court. Yes. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right, Councillor Dave Mitchell has been waiting a long time. Thank, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'll be as brief as I possibly can. Uh, I'll just pick up on the point that uh, Steve Fox made about uh, the development in our ward. Uh, the benefits accrue quite a way because the demolition of the youth club will lend really slant for social housing. We'll have a development of the new youth and community centre and it will also supply traffic county throughout uh, a, historic, <laughs> a historic village. Uh, so that's the way you look at it and get the whole picture to make sure it's only a small piece but the game was really uh, uh, magnificent. Uh, the point I want to stand up and, and raise, Mr Mayor, is in relation to the difference in the notice of motions that were in front of us. It's the one where the Conservative group asked for all information to go back to the overview and scrutiny committee, which I am the chair of, and I opened it up to all members of the council once I became chair of that committee. We had a private meeting because it is private matters that we were discussing. It, from that, the uh, review that we had, when it was open to all councillors, it then went to the Business Select Committee, which I know upset some uh, members of the public that attended. It was specifically a closed meeting because of financial matters that were being uh, discussed. And we had money. to keep it that way. Well, yeah, yeah. The decision that was made on the night was a unanimous decision. And quite rightly, uh, Council Francis is true. It was moved and seconded by the Labour group that went forward. The difference that we're asking for is that uh, the Liberal Democrats are now stating that it should, all the information should not go back to the Select Committee, but it should go back to all councillors. And that's the whole crux of the matter on this. Because when all councillors found out what the deal was and how it was going, they actually thought it was an absolute shambles. And it needed to be that properly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Jerry Williams. Thank you. Um, yeah, just a couple of points to make, really. First of all, I mean, we've heard that the bluff and roster was acting in three belts from some of the other one on the part of the party on the opposite side of the hands from others. Um, can I say, the, the party opposite's government has reduced green belt defences and planning from 40 to 12. We have a national planning system that is rotten to the core and not fit for purpose. The favours develop developers above the environment. Before that is reformed at national level, the environment in Greenbelt is in peril. Mm. Whilst developers run them up, we
voted for the Hoyle Gulf results. We had the occasion that we, made, we had the last special council where we had two members who said they didn't support the Hoyle Gulf results, but they wouldn't vote against. Yeah. They voted with yeah. their group. I find it incredible if you'd opposed to something, have the cottage convictions, vote for us, and speak up for the people here to represent. Don't hide behind, I'll get thrown out the group and we'll be able to vote for you leader. That is not acceptable. Yeah. 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 Are we watching you tonight? You either believe in what you're saying, or you don't believe in what you're saying. Councillor Hackett, on, on the day after the elections on Radio Merseyside, you said you would oppose the Hoyle Gulf results prior to the elections. Why then? Why then did on every occasion you vote for it? Yeah. If, if you lot over there had taken notice when we were calling special councils years ago, this deal might not have been signed. Yeah. And we might not be in this position now where, as Chris said, we are stuck. We are in a position where you have followed, whether it was a previous administration or not, collectively, all you Labour members have put us in this position we are today. And I think you all need to be mindful of that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Look, I'm conscious really that I, we've had 10 speakers already on, on, on the issue. Right, I am going to make these the last two speakers, okay? This, this is the, we're going to, so otherwise we'll be here all evening. Um, Councillor uh, Denise Leach, first of all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to challenge those comments that you've just made, uh, Councillor Blakely. We did not vote in favour of the Hoyle Golf Resort. <laughs> what, we, what we did is we said that we would like to see all of the facts before us before the decision was taken. That, in my mind, is the sensible thing to do. We don't make a decision on half of the information. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and Mazel Tov to all the new councillors who have spoken for the first time this evening. Um, contrary again to what Councillor Blakey said, I did not vote for the Hoyle Golf Resort to go ahead. The motion that was put to council that we voted on together was to refer it to scrutiny, and I moved the motion at scrutiny to uh, urge the cabinet to recommend that they do not enter into the agreement of, of uh, £26 million loan <laughs> uh, as the part of the financial package. That motion was accepted unanimously. And now um, the, we'll, so we, we'll see what happens. Um, it's, no, it's no foregone conclusion either way. I'd just like to say it's the height of hypocrisy for the Tories to present themselves as the defenders of the Green Belt. It's Tory ministers. It's the Tory government that changed the planning regulations in presumption of the development. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. We obviously don't know. The Labour didn't build any houses. Cash. Cash. Get your history right. The, the Conservative Party it champions the free market. It wants the developers to take over our green belt to make massive. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. Yeah. And it's not the Tories that are saving the Green Belt, quite the opposite. It's people that save the Green Belt. I'd like to pay tribute to the thousands of people who signed petitions, to the activists who've organised the groups, and, and the people who've sent us all emails. We do read them, we do listen to them, even though we don't always respond. Well, right, right. And that's right. actually a cabinet for, for, for reconsidering, for looking at the evidence, to say that maybe we'll we need to do things differently going forward. Thank you. Yeah. Stop it. Thank you, Councillor Burke. I intend to move on now. Seconders. Um, Councillor Alan Graham, you've got now up to three minutes to speak to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
May I also congratulate the four councillors who made their major speeches tonight. They are new to this council, so are many other councillors. I was elected last year, so are several others. A good proportion of members sitting here tonight had no part in the decisions that have been made in the past about Celtic Manor. In my naivety uh, last year, um, I, I did a bit of research. I look back to the minutes of the, the call-in meeting that had taken place two years before I was elected. That was in December 2016. And those minutes say, the signing of the Framework Development Agreement did not mean that the council would be locked in yeah. as the council would still retain absolute discretion to withdraw from the whole scheme. Well, I thought, fair enough. So I moved a motion uh, earlier this year saying that the council should make no further investment in this project. It was uh, narrowly defeated uh, at that occasion. And the, the minutes of that meeting say, the council believes it would be inappropriate to make a decision on this scheme before we have the full facts. Well, the full facts were that as apparently, as now comes light, this decision had already been made to be <laughs> Just last week, this matter went again to the uh, cabinet, the new cabinet, which, uh, as uh, my colleague has said, uh, is, is being much more open and, and uh, uh, approachable than the previous one. Um, but nevertheless, the minutes of the cabinet meeting on the 8th of July say, the leader informed those present that cabinet was not to decide on whether to allow the scheme to go ahead. That was a decision for a different time. Well, the different times, two years ago, apparently. <laughs> this is a scheme, he says, which will create hundreds of new jobs and give Hoyling sort of high speeds a huge boost. So, in, all, in other words, the cabinet is still wedded to the scheme. It is still looking to, to uh, progress this and make this great boost in, in the high streets. Because what we know now is that the vast majority of people in Wirral do not want this scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, problem is, the problem is we are tied into it because this development agreement, yeah, yeah. and we've been advised that should the council renege on the agreement, that we stand liable potentially to a, a charges of about 15 to 20 million pounds. And that's a huge, a huge decision which councils have to weigh up. Um, well, I think it's time we, we are open and the people know what the situation is because the too much is done in secret and that all hangs around the fact we're run by a cabinet system that keeps the information to itself and that's why most members on, on this side of the chamber are very keen to, to, to change the way the, the world is governed and move to a, a, a committee system so that things are not done behind closed doors. Uh, and uh, confidential matters are, are, are kept purely for financial matters. When it comes to a decision like this, the people need to know what is going on. Okay. Can I have a seconder of the motion, Councillor Tony Cox, you now have up to three minutes.
but he's actually been involved in judicial reviews within his own and backing within his own ward to save green belts. So he's more than happy to go out on the lane to save green belts in his ward, but he's happy for mine to get level, great sways for the North Coast. Then go, what, what? Show some integrity. Yeah, show some integrity. I've been unwavering in my objections to the housing development within the green belt, which is the only way that this development can be financed. And the same, as I just said, cannot be said for the Labour group. And this has not gone unnoticed by the general public. Yeah. It is no small coincidence that two of the former Labour cabinet members who lost the seats in May elections both had dubious voting uh, records <coughs> on this project and on saving green belts. Understanding of the English language on that side of the bench, he would know that dubious, a synonym for a dubious, is uncertain or unsure. And I'm pretty convinced I can recall Mr. Brightmore, and this was highlighted by the Stop the Hoylake Golf Resort, yeah. voted for the Hoylake Golf Resort, but yet, without leaflets saying that he was saving green belt. So I am absolutely justified in my way. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Ben. It's, it's true. Mr. Mayor, while it's commendable that the Labour uh, run administration has finally recognised the opposition and concern residents have to the funding project, the 26 million taxpayers' money, but it smacks of too little, too late. What more, this still does not address the fact that the enabling development of 160 houses, 40 apartments will still have to take place if the project is come to fruition. We will all have seen the plethora of emails that have been sent to us, it's been uh, alluded to by Councillor Bird. And I, I want to read a small excerpt. One lady writes, and you may have seen it, Widow people do not want to lose our assets, and the sooner the council and its officers realise this, the easier life will become. Yeah. She went, went on to say, It will be a wise decision to listen to the people who have yes. been voicing their concerns and disapproval for a long time now, and they are not in the minority. Yeah. They are, however, being ignored. Yes. Yeah. This, I'll, 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 I'll wind up with this is how this council is seen, and this is how the public lose faith and trust in politicians. And I yeah. urge the leader of the council and the ruling administration to show that openness and transparency in their next steps in considering the project, and to be clear with the public if they will now press ahead with it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
for development to take place in the green belt, you have to develop, uh, to, you have to demonstrate very special circumstances, or now I think the word is being changed to exceptional circumstances. I just cannot see that in relation to this golf resort, but perhaps somebody knows something that I don't know and we don't know. Um, Councillor Fabs referred to, to the sale project at West Kirby um, and alleged early support for the scheme. But as I mentioned in my earlier speech, I believe that was based on a flawed consultation. Yeah. Yeah. The consultation was commissioned by the developer and there were three overlapping questions. And if you said, you could say, no you didn't want it, or yes you did want it, or yes you wanted it, uh, only if such and such a thing happened. Well, they took the, the, the yes if questions and added them to the yeses. Can, so, can you address the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry Councillor Burt. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Burt, um, I'm glad to admit it that um, the way she voted in the Council in February this year. Um, but I've also um, been happy to provide with the minutes of the uh, Business Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Uh, from Wednesday the 7th of December, that's the one where my motion to send it back to Cabinet was, was defeated. And then a quite well worded motion was presented uh, by members of the Labour group. And it was resolved, nine votes to six, that this committee upholds the Cabinet decision to take the necessary next steps in the development of the Hollywood Golf Resort as an exciting and ambitious project that we hope will prove beneficial to the people of Wirral in terms of jobs, local businesses, leisure opportunities, the environment and the visitor economy. And that was resolved nine votes to six. And looking at the list of who was present, there were nine members of the Labour group and six members of opposition parties. Enjoy your conclusions. <laughs> so, um, as mem uh, members will probably notice, the Conservative motion is a little bit, well, soft, I have to admit. That is purely for procedural reasons to get this motion to this council this evening. Uh, yes, we do want the Cabinet to keep uh, members informed through the Business Overview and Scrutiny Committee, but we would far rather that they simply decide
asks that the relevant overview and scrutiny committee is kept fully up to date, which it can be at any time. The lip dead motion asks, expects members beyond cabinet to be kept fully informed of any further discussions with the developer about their intentions, which are rather different things, especially as letters, phone calls, faxes, whatever communication is used from the developer could be coming through at any time. And members of this council in this interesting and precarious situation legally we need to know what's going on. Sorry for interrupting, Mr. Mayor. No, thank you, Mr. Gentleman. I understood, Mr. Mayor, which is why it's two, two separate votes. Conservative so group first, the Lib Dem motion second. Okay, uh, right, uh, that's been clarified. We will now use the electronic voting.
earlier. Uh, it's just going to have the Council's attention. Uh, Council of Greeny, um, we're not clear how you voted. Could you please clarify? Thank you.